So we have a question here. The question says that the velocity v for the stream flow of a liquid in a small uniform tube depends on the radius r of the tube, the density rho, and then the coefficient of viscosity of the liquid. Use the method of dimensional analysis to obtain an expression for the velocity, given that v is equal to r square all over p, r square times p, all over 4 times coefficient of viscosity l, where p over l is equal to the pressure gradient. Now, first of all, what we do is to bring out each of the parameters given. Now, what we are given is the velocity v for the stream flow. So, we say v is the velocity is directly, is dependent. The velocity v for the stream flow of a liquid in a small uniform tube depends on the radius arrow of the tube. So, it's dependent on the radius, the density, the density is rho. And then the coefficient of viscosity the coefficient of viscosity is given by this of the liquid now let us use the method of dimensional analysis to explain or to obtain an expression for the velocity so how do we actually go about this it's a very simple thing now we want to change this proportionality sign right so this gives us v is equal to if we change this proportionality sign we put k here and then this becomes arrow this becomes density and then this becomes the coefficient of viscosity okay now the next thing we are going to do now is write our v is equals to k now introduce x y and z in each of these quantities here so here becomes arrow raised to the power of x and then density raised to the power of y and then this raised to the power of z now what we are going to do next is write each of the dimension of each of these quantity or write out the dimensions of each of these quantities right so our velocity let me write it here the dimension for velo or let me write it here the dimension for velocity is lt minus 1 dimension for radius is l the dimension for density which is given as rho is m of course you know this capital letter m l minus 3 and then coefficient of viscosity is m l minus 1 t minus 1 that is the dimension for each of these now substituting into this equation here given what are we going to have now in place of v what do you think we can put here in place of v we can put l let me rewrite it out again what we have here is All we have here is v is equal to k arrow x then the density raised to the power of y coefficient of viscosity raised to the power of z right so substituting in each of these coefficients now what is this going to give to us? v is what lt minus one and then this becomes k and then arrow is l so we have k times l times the density is what okay this is raised to the power of x right because the radius is raised to the power of s density is m l minus 3 you now put bracket raised to the power of what y times the coefficient of viscosity is bracket m l minus 1 t minus 1 everything raised to the power of z now, I told you that whenever you are given a dimension like this, what do you normally do? You look at it and then if there is no, if any of the fundamental quantities are missing from here, you introduce them, but raised to the power of zero. Because anything raised to the power of zero is one. So this gives us m raised to the power of zero, then l raised to the power of what? Nothing. That is one. t raised to the power of minus one. Reason because... The three fundamental quantities are mass, length, and time. You have length and time here, but you don't have mass. So you raise mass to the power of zero. This will be effective while you are comparing the both sides of the equation so that you have something to compare with that of what mass. Okay? It's understood. So this gives us k times a raised to the power of x. Use this y to open through the bracket. This gives us m raised to the power of y. a raised to the power of minus 3y. Right? Then this times... Use this z to open through the bracket. This gives us m raised to the power of z 
L raised to the power of minus Z, T raised to the power of minus Z. Okay? Now, at this point in time, what do you think we can do? Let's call it like them. So this gives us M raised to the power of 0, L raised to the L T minus 1 is equal to K. Collect all M to be on one side. So this becomes times, what is this M we have here? It's raised to the power of Y times M raised to the, what is this one we have here? Raised to the power of Z. Are you getting it now? Then the next thing is L. Let's collect all the L. So this is L raised to the power of X times L raised to the power of minus 3Y times L raised to the power of minus Z. Then the next one we have is T. The only T we have here is T raised to the power of minus Z. Is that understood? So at this point in time, what do we do now? We now um, use indices to simplify the ones that have the same basis. Are we getting it now? So this gives us M raised to the power of zero, LT minus one is equal to, so here gives us K times, now this is M and M, the bases are equal. So what do you do to the power? You add them. So this gives us M raised to the power of Y plus Z times L. Now this, this, and this, the bases are equal. According to the law of indices, you add the power since multiplication is in between them. But take cognizance of this negative sign here. Plus times minus will give us minus. Are we getting now? So this one gives us X minus 3Y minus Z. And then, of course, we are left with T raised to the power of minus Z. Okay. At this point in time, what do we now do? We compare both sides of the equation. Okay. So now comparing both sides of the equation, what do we have? Let me try and write what we have here first. We have M raised to the power of 0, L T minus 1 is equal to K times M. What is on top of M? Y plus Z. So we have Y plus Z here times L. What do we have on top of L? x minus 3y minus z. So we have x minus 3y minus z times t, of course, minus z. Okay? I think that's what we have, t minus z. Now, at this point in time, we can now compare both sides of the equation. Now, compare both sides. Let's take m out first. So this m raised to the power of 0, you equate it to whatsoever you have on m here. So m raised to the power of y plus z. Now, according to the law of indices, if you have a raised to the power of n is equal to a square, a cancels a, so n will be equal to 2, okay? So, we are going to use that ideology now to solve this. So, m can cancel m, so we can say 0 is equal to y plus z, and then y plus z is equal to 0. And we can say this is equation 1, okay? Now, let's attempt the other one, equation 2. That one is for L. So L here, of course, L standing on its own means L is raised to the power of L is raised to the power of one. So this will be equals to compare with the L. At ah, this, this is the right hand side of the equation. Okay, this is the left hand side of the equation. What we are doing is comparison of the left hand side of the equation with the right hand side. So this becomes L raised to the power of minus x x minus 3y minus z l cancels l 1 is equals to x minus 3y minus z and then we can say x minus 3y minus z is equal to 1 okay we can say this is equation 2 now the next one is equation 3 let's try equation 3 that one is t minus 1 is equal to t minus z. Now, t can cancel t, right? So, minus 1 is equal to minus z. Minus cancels minus. So, we can say our z is equal to 1. So, we can say from the above, z is equal to 1. Now, also note that our z is equal to 1. But from equation 1, so we can say from equation 1, now y plus z is equal to 0. So if z is equal to 1, this becomes y plus 1. Wherever you see z, you put 1, 
equal to 0 and then y equals to minus 1. So z is 1, y is minus 1. Now, you can now say from equation 2, from equation 2, now equation 2 is x minus 3y minus z is equal to 1, right? Now, wherever you see z, you put 1. Wherever you see y, you put minus 1. So, this becomes x minus 3. y is what? Minus 1. Minus z is what? 1. And this will be equal to 1. So, x minus 3 times this is plus 3. Minus 1 is equal to 1. So, x, this 3 minus 1 is what? Plus 2 is equal to 1. Now, take these two to this side. What are we left to have? x is equal to 1 minus 2, right? And x is equal to minus 1. So, at the end of the day, we've discovered that our x is equal to minus 1. Our y is minus 1. And our z is 1. Now, coming back to the equation given initially, the equation is V is equals to K R O X density Y and viscosity Z. So, we can say V from the equation normally, this will give us V is equal to K, right? So, here will be R O X this Y and this Z. So, substituting into this equation, V will be equals to what? K. R X will be what? R raised to the power of minus 1. Density. Y is what? Minus 1. And then your viscosity now. Coefficient of viscosity will be raised to the power of Z, which is what? 1. So that at the end of the day, what are we going to have? We are going to have V. We are going to have V is equal to k now this arrow here means if this arrow is to the power of minus one means arrow should come down okay this density raised to the power of minus one also means the density should come down okay then we now have n so we can say our v is equals to k n and then arrow then times the density now this n we said is the coefficient of viscosity Okay, so that is our V, right? But the other part of the equation says that V is given as R square P all over 4NL. So let's come back. That part of the equation says V is equal to, let me rewrite it, R square P. all over 4 nl 4 density uh, viscosity and then l where we are told that p over l is pressure gradient we've established this before the pressure gradient is pressure over length are we getting it velocity gradient is velocity over length so now we also established from what we calculated that v is equal to kn all over arrow so this is equals to kn all over arrow times the density okay so that at the end of the day we cannot equate both sides to get our k's because you were asked to obtain an expression for the dimensionless constant so if v is equals to this and v is equals to this it means v and v are equal hence if you equate this we can now say that v is equals to v if V is equal to V, it means that this is equal to this. So, we can say that our R square P all over 4 NL is equal to K. Then, sorry for calling this N, this coefficient of viscosity. And then, R times the rho, which is density. So, to make K serial to the formula, what do we do? We can cross multiply, right? Now, if we cross multiply this, multiply by this, what will it give to us? R square P times 
arrow times density is equal to 4 nl times kl are we getting it now now this multiply this arrow times arrow give us what arrow cube and then we have p e this row is looking like p is equal to 4 n times uh, this uh, coefficient of viscosity times coefficient of viscosity will give us square and then we have l times k but what we are looking for here is k so divide both sides by 4 n square l so this gives us 4 n square l this cancel this our k at the end of the day would be equal to so k would be equal to arrow cube all over 4 n square l so if you get this as your final answer you are very very correct so that is the solution to this question thank you for your time